Welcome back to Cityscape. In this episode of Secret People, we will cover Ray Kurzweil, an American inventor and futurist known for his transhumanist predictions. In a recent episode on Ted Kaczynski, we covered the Unabomber's warning that technology will become a sentient species that will inevitably reign supreme after a bloody war between men and machines. Many people have made similar predictions, from Elon Musk to Stephen Hawking. But what if the contrary was true? What if machines are not a new separate species, but a continuation of human evolution? This means the technology we see today is an extension of us. An extension that we will inevitably merge and become one with, according to the guests in this episode. In fact, Ray Kurzweil predicts machines will allow the human species to not only reach perfect health, but immortality. Many critics claim our guest is projecting biological delusions, but as we will see, Kurzweil has a long track record of making accurate predictions. As always, let's start with a brief background. Raymond Kurzweil was born on February 12, 1948 in Queens, New York. He was born to a secular Jewish family who emigrated from Austria right before the onset of World War II. His father Frederick was a concert pianist and conductor, and his mother Hannah was a visual artist. At the age of just five, young Kurzweil decided to become an inventor. At the age of seven, he built a robotic puppet theater, and at the age of 12, he became involved in computers when there were barely any around. At the age of 15, Kurzweil created a computer program that analyzed the work of classical composers and synthesized its own music and similar styles. Yep, you heard correctly. Ray Kurzweil built an AI that composes music at the age of 15. In 1965, he was invited to appear on a CBS television program, I've Got a Secret, where he performed a piano piece that was composed by a computer he built. Young Kurzweil was clearly on a path of great achievement. Got a secret! Story! Steve Allen! Uh, first of all, would you tell the folks your name? My name is Raymond Kurzweil, and I'm from Queens, New York. Queens, New York. Uh, and before we show the audience what his uh, secret is, uh, we have just a few seconds for Raymond to play this piece of music. Raymond, the piano's all yours. Thank you. Raymond's secret concerns something that he did, and uh, we'll start the game this time with Bess Myers. Raymond, that's a very unlikely sounding piece of music. Did you compose it? No, I didn't. $20 down, 60 to go. Henry? Was that thing written by a computer? Uh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I built a computer, and uh, by feeding in certain relationships and music, I was able to write music with it. Raymond, how old are you? I'm 17. Do your parents know what you've been up to? <laughs> My father is a musician, and he doesn't like the uh, competition. <laughs> Raymond, I'm astounded at anyone who can um, uh, do anything of all, uh, at all of this sort, and uh, I predict a great future for you. We were very okay. pleased to have you with us tonight. Congratulations. Thank you. Ray Kurzweil entered MIT in 1967. One of his reasons for choosing that school was to study computer science under Marvin Minsky, the man who is often referred to as the godfather of AI. Anyway, Kurzweil would get his brass rat by obtaining a bachelor's degree in computer science and literature from MIT in 1970. I made a short video on a brass rat, by the way, so those of you who don't know what that is, I highly recommend you watch it. Kurzweil would go on to found many companies and inventions after graduating. Ray Kurzweil is a prolific inventor. He is primarily known for building the first optical character recognition system and text-to-speech device for the blind or disabled to read. He is also known for building the Kurzweil K250, a device capable of reproducing the sound of a large number of instruments. The recording and mixing abilities of the K250 made it possible for a single person to compose and play an entire orchestral piece. In other words, Kurzweil has definitely made breakthroughs in the music industry. In December 2012, 
He was hired by Google in a full-time position to work on new projects involving machine learning and language processing. Kurzweil was personally hired by Google co-founder Larry Page himself. I can go on and on about Ray Kurzweil's other accomplishments, but that's not what the Secret People episode is about. What we want to look at are the interesting predictions that made him so famous. What are they? Let's take a look. According to Kurzweil, the development of a sentient artificial intelligence is right around the corner. He says computers will be routinely passing the Turing test by 2029. In that same decade, nanobots will be able to cure practically any disease and heal any wound, including those of the brain. Nanobots will also spontaneously create food by simply reorganizing existing matter so you can kiss land erosion and food shortages goodbye. In my episode on the Georgia Guidestones, I've mentioned that resources are not fixed things, but a mental phenomenon. In other words, resources are in a mine. This is a perfect example of such case. Anyway, Kurzweil continues by saying that in the 2030s, advancing technology will understand the workings of the brain to such a degree that it will be possible to upload someone's consciousness onto a computer or into a robotic body. More importantly, he predicts that by 2045, computing power will be so great that it will be impossible for an ordinary human to keep up in society. In order to function in any relevant manner, humans will have to augment themselves by merging with machines. Humans of the future will be cyborgs in a sense. Of course, there will always be purists who resist merging any part of their body with gadgets. But the cost of this choice will be so great that these natural humans will inevitably go extinct. This means, according to Ray Kurzweil, that 23 years from now, you, my viewer, will have to make a choice between staying a natural human or becoming a cyborg. What path will you choose? Leave your thoughts in the comment section. Here's a clip of Ray Kurzweil speaking on a subject. The three great overlapping revolutions. Uh, sometimes it goes by the letter GNR. And G stands for genetics. Really, another word for it is biotechnology, is mastering the information processes in our biology. And we ultimately will actually be able to reprogram biology away from disease and from aging. N stands for nanotechnology. In the next 25 years, we will have blood cell sized devices that go inside your body and keep you healthy from inside go in your brain and interact with your biological neurons and allow us to merge with non-biological intelligence. The third one goes by the letter R, which stands for robotics, robots. Really, though, refers to artificial intelligence. And that's the most significant revolution of all. In about 20 years, I've set the date 2029, uh, a machine, an AI, will be able to match human intelligence and go beyond it. So artificial intelligence, which will give us not just more human intelligence, but will actually give us superhuman intelligence, uh, will enable us to solve problems that we're not able to solve today. We're looking forward to a time where we can back up our brains. Our brains will be largely non-biological, so we will be basically machines. We can stop aging. We can live indefinitely. All of our biological bodies are, are limited and we need to deal with overcoming their limitations with one means or another. There's nothing good about disease and death as much as we try to ennoble it. People have had no alternative but to rationalize, oh, that tragic thing, that's really a good thing. But death is a profound tragedy. It's a profound loss of relationships and knowledge and skill and meaning. Some people articulate, well, we need to accept death. That's the goal of life, is to get comfortable with death and accept it. I don't accept it. Biology is very impressive and intricate, clever, but also very suboptimal compared to what we ultimately will be able to engineer with nanotechnology. We are building devices now that are at the nanoscale 
This is a design of a robotic red blood cell. Conservative analysis of these respirocytes shows that if you were to replace a portion of your red blood cells with these robotic versions, you could do an Olympic sprint for 15 minutes without taking a breath or sit at the bottom of your pool for four hours. We'll be able to download software against specific pathogens, including ones that have never been seen before, not be subject to autoimmune disorders. And if you look at what will be, in principle, feasible with nanotechnology, we can go far beyond the limitations of our version one bodies. These predictions may seem outrageous to many of you, but before you dismiss Mr. Kurzweil as crazy, keep in mind that his predictions have had an outstanding 86% success rate according to several sources. Of course, I am only scratching the surface of Mr. Kurzweil's predictions. Those of you who want to learn more should watch his documentary on the subject, Transcendent Man. Link is in the description. Speaking of technology, one location you can check out is the MIT Museum in Boston. The museum houses a large archive of artifacts, technical drawings, and exhibitions that displays the rich engineering advancements contributed by MIT since its inception in 1861. The museum is free for students, but admission for adults is $18. Those of you who want to visit the MIT Museum should save this location on a Cityscape app. Ray Kurzweil has received many awards for his achievements as an inventor. He has received 20 honorary doctorate degrees from various schools. President Bill Clinton awarded him with the National Medal of Technology, the highest technical honor in the country. Kurzweil has also been placed in the National Inventors Hall of Fame in 2002. Despite his remarkable accomplishments, he is only human. We have yet to see whether his predictions will materialize at the timing he projects. As for my thoughts on a subject, I think anyone with decent vision can see what he predicts will occur sooner or later. While from a technical standpoint I agree with Kurzweil, I do think there are several blind spots in his interpretation of the world. Kurzweil speaks as if technology is the only frontier to cross. It is not. Human evolution is not complete. When machines finally free all humans from the drudgery of labor, people will primarily work on themselves. They will hone their inner forces. I am certain some pretty fantastical phenomenon will come out of that. The X-Men we see today as fiction will be a reality tomorrow. Society is currently being taken over by a technical elite. But tomorrow, it will be ruled by a spiritual elite with superpowers. Consciousness can bend physics. We do not need to use the proxy called technology to do that. Once this lesson is collectively learned, humanity will truly transcend. I guess my version of transhumanism will look closer to the X-Men than human cyborgs. Perhaps maybe, the human population will have a mix of both. See you next time.